Hello friends and welcome to the how to series. In this video we will be going over Monk which is the second melee DPS on the list. We'll show you all of the abilities that Monk has at its disposal and how to fully utilize them. After which we will go into an opener rotation and reopener part of the video showing you a good baseline into how to play Monk at level 90. Then we'll move on to a stat and gearing part of the video and I'll quickly break down what stats we should be going for when we're going for certain pieces of gear and melding. So without further delay, let's just dive right in. First, let's start off with the form system. Unlike your traditional melee combo, Monk has a form system. The form system consists of Oppo Oppo form, Raptor form and Curl form. In that respective order, you will be using those specific attacks, but let's go over them form by form. Oppo Oppo form includes Boot Shine, Dragon Kick, and Armor the Destroyer. Armor the Destroyer upgrading into Shadow of the Destroyer, and we will be calling it Shadow of the Destroyer throughout the video. So if I say Shadow of the Destroyer and you're a low level, it means Arm of the Destroyer. All three of these attacks can be executed without the Oppo Oppo form, and this is the only exception to the rule because instead of requiring the form to be able to use them, they will just grant an additional bonus being in the form instead. Let's start off with Dragon Kick. Dragon Kick is going to grant us Leaden Fist if we are in Oppo Oppo form. If we are not in Oppo Oppo form, we will not get this buff. That said, it's still better off to be used over Bootshine when we don't have a form. The reason for this is because Bootshine gets more potency from Leaden Fist, but also it's always a critical hit under Oppo Oppo. The thing is, Dragon Kick just has outright more potency, so unless we have Leaden Fist up, we always want to be using Dragon Kick. So an easy way to put it is we'll always be alternating our uses of these two attacks. Then we have Shadow of the Destroyer. This is our AoE Oppo Oppo form attack, and we'll be using this on three or more targets. When we get Oppo Oppo form, it's going to guarantee critical hits on all the enemies. This is an AoE around us, by the way, and so are all of the GCD monk attacks, with a few exceptions, which we will go over. You'll notice all of these attacks will grant us access to Raptor form. Raptor form consists of a true strike, Twin Snakes and Four Point Fury. True Strike is just raw damage, and we want to be using this when we do not have our buff from Twin Snakes or Four Point Fury. This buff is a Disciplined Fist. It's going to increase the damage we deal by 15%, and it's going to last 15 seconds, so it's imperative that we keep this up at all times. When we're AoEing, it's a pretty easy thing. We'll just be using our 1 2 3 AoE combo, and it's no problem. When we're single targeting, the best way to put it is we'll be alternating our usage of True Strike and Twin Snakes. So of course we'll put Twin Snakes up first to get Disciplined Fist, and then we'll use True Strike just for the raw damage output. And again, you'll notice all these attacks will grant us access to Curl Form. Curl Form consists of Snap Punch, Demolish, and Rock Breaker. Snap Punch is just raw damage again, but it will increase in damage if you execute this from the target's flank. Demolish, on the other hand, is a damage over time effect, and it does increase its raw damage when you use this from the target's rear. So make sure that you are getting both of these positionals off when it comes to being in curl form. Just like Disciplined Fist, Demolish is pretty imperative that you keep this up at all times in a single target scenario because this damage over time effect is highly valuable and it would be just a straight up DPS loss by losing it. An easy way to think about this is you'll be using two snap punches before you have to reapply your demolish. That said, this can change with other GCDs coming into the mix, so just keep that in mind. Again, Rock Breaker is just our AoE equivalent of being in curl form, so we'll just use this on three or more targets. And then you'll also notice that all of these will grant us access to Oppo Oppo form, which is going to give us the buff from Dragon Kick Boot Shine or Shadow of the Destroyer, so just keep that in mind as this is going to increase the overall potency of those attacks now. 
Next, we have the chakra system. The chakra system holds up to five charges, and there is a plethora of ways to generate these stacks. First, let's go over the abilities that we actually get access to when we get all five chakras. We have Steel Peak into Forbidden Chakra. So Steel Peak is the lower end version, and then Forbidden Chakra is the higher end version. So Steel Peak will simply upgrade into Forbidden Chakra. And then we have Howling Fist into Enlightenment. And again, Howling Fist will simply upgrade into Enlightenment. So we will be calling them these moving forward into the video. So these are the attacks that you can use when you unlock all five chakras. The Forbidden Chakra is a single target attack, so we want to be using this in a single target scenario. And Enlightenment is our AoE version, which is a straight line in front of us, so we want to be using this in AoE situation, three or more targets. Now how do we generate these stacks? Let's quickly go over that. First we have this button called Meditation, and every time we press it, it's going to open up a chakra, or if we're out of combat, it will open up all five chakras. Ideally, you do not want to be using this in combat unless you're in a raid or trial instance and the boss disengages you or becomes untargetable, then you may as well open up some chakras in your downtime. You'll of course want to use it before every pull and boss fight in dungeons, so you instantly get five chakras. And you also want to be using this before a tank pulls the boss in a raid or trial instance, so we have instantly five chakras going into the fight. There are a few other ways to open up chakras and we will go over a few of the ways now and a few of the ways later. It will make sense when we go over the later parts. The first way is critical hits. So when we get to level 38, every time we get a critical hit, we have an 80% chance to open up a chakra. And then when we get to level 74, we will then get an upgraded version of that. And it's going to guarantee that every time we crit, it's going to open up a chakra. So remember we have Boot Shine and Shadow of the Destroyer. These both guarantee critical hits. So just keep in mind that we will always open up a chakra when we use those abilities. Another thing to note is with chakras, we want to be using these chakra abilities as soon as we have five charges. We do not want to be holding on to them, with the only exception being the opener. Otherwise, we never really want to hold on to these unless it's going to clip into our GCD. Then we can hold on to it for a GCD, and that's fine. Otherwise, dump these as soon as you can because you don't really want to be over capping because it's a lot of damage and we want to be getting as many of these throughout an encounter as we can. Before we get onto the real niftiness of Monk, let's go over form shift and a few off globals that Monk has. First, form shift. This is on the global cooldown, so a bit like meditation, we won't be using this when the boss is targetable or there's something to hit at the time. That said, it's really good as it grants us formless fist. Formless Fist allows us to execute any of the form attacks and get the full benefit from them. So if we were to use Dragon Kick, for instance, we would get our Leaden Fist straight away rather than having to wait until the next Dragon Kick. So ideally, before we open any fight or any dungeon pool, we want to be using Form Shift so we're getting the full benefit from our attacks. Next, we have a Nat Man. Now, I have to cover this, unfortunately. It is not that great. What it does is extends the duration of our disciplined fist and our form shift or current form at the time. This can be situationally good, but for the most part, it's not that great. Although I do still tend to use it when a boss becomes untargetable or between dungeon pools just to quickly refresh my disciplined fist. But otherwise, it isn't fantastic and you need to be prioritizing your chakra buildup and going into your form shift before you even consider using a Natman. If you can get away with extending your disciplined fist to max duration, also getting all of your chakras and being in a formless fist before you use this, then yeah, go for it, it'll be worth it. But otherwise, prioritize getting into your formless fist and prioritize getting all your chakras before you even consider a Natman. If you know you can do a Natman, keep your disciplined fist up and get all of that off as well, then as I've said, go for it. Should be absolutely fine. Because voiceover Azurite completely forgot about Thunderclap, editor Azurite has to step in and mention to you Thunderclap. Thunderclap is Monk's gap closer and it has two charges, which increases to three charges once you get to level 84. This can be used on enemies and allies, so it is highly versatile. This also deals no potency, so you do not need to spam this for DPS. You can save these exclusively for when you need the extra mobility. Next up, we have Riddle of Fire. 
Now, Rid of Fire is just going to increase our damage dealt by 15% for 20 seconds, and it's on a 60 second cooldown. So, more or less, we'll be using this off cooldown, with the exception of the opener, of course. Next, we have Brotherhood. Now, Brotherhood is very nice. This is going to grant everyone in your party 5% damage, including yourself. On top of this, for each member that gets the effect of Brotherhood, there's also an additional effect called Meditative Brotherhood. And for every time they use a GCD, there's a 20% chance that they will open up one of your chakras. As for yourself, every time you personally use a GCD, you will open up a chakra under the effect of Brotherhood. So during Brotherhood, your chakras will probably be opening up like a mad. So just make sure that you're paying attention to your chakra stacks and trying to get off as many forbidden chakras or enlightenments as possible during this window without clipping into your GCD. Just like Riddle of Fire, this can more or less be used off cooldown with the exception of the opener. And this also lasts 15 seconds and it's on a 120 minute cooldown. So this is a two minute raid buff. Then we have Riddle of Wind. Riddle of Wind is going to reduce our auto attack delay by 50% for 15 seconds and it's on a 90 second recast. This doesn't line up very well with any of our kit. So for the most part, we'll just be using this off cooldown to increase our damage output. Let's quickly go over Monk's individual utility as well. So we have Mantra and Riddle of Earth. Mantra is going to increase the healing everyone in your party receives, including yourself, by 10%. And this is going to last 15 seconds and it's on a 90 second cooldown. So this is highly valuable to use before big raid wide damage is going to come out because it's going to help your healers out a considerable amount. Then we have Riddle of Earth, probably the most nuts personal mitt any DPS has in the game. Every time we use Riddle of Earth, it will grant us three stacks of Riddle of Earth. Each of these stacks will reduce damage taken by 20%. Do note, this doesn't mean it's going to reduce damage taken by 60%. It's always a static 20%. But for each GCD that we use under the effect of Riddle of Earth, it will take a stack away. So this buff lasts three of our personal GCDs. And once we've used three GCDs, we'll lose the effect. But this also has three charges and it's on a 30 second cooldown. So you basically have nine charges of this if you have all three charges up, which is insane. And you're never going to have to use all of them back to back to back. So this is an incredibly useful ability. Make sure that you are using this when you're going to take lethal damage or there's raid wides coming out or whatever. You're in progression. Just make sure you're fully utilizing this because sometimes it's going to come to a point in a fight when you're progressing it and an AoE is going to take everyone off guard and it's going to kill literally probably everyone, maybe all the DPS, a few DPS, whatever. If you use this, you won't be killed. It's as simple as that. You will not die to the damage and you'll be able to live through the mechanics and whatnot. I can't really stress how good this is it really is just good make sure you are fully taking advantage of this and helping out your healers as much as possible this also promotes greed on monk so taking unnecessary damage to keep up time i am not saying always do this to grief your healers or whatever if they need to cast a gcd to heal you that is griefing and you shouldn't consider that but this does allow you to take extra damage which other players might not want to take and still live through the damage by healing yourself via other actions and all that other stuff so just keep that in mind this is kind of promoting you to be greedy with your uptime and such our final utility action is six-sided star this is a raw potency attack it doesn't need a form or anything like that it's on the global cooldown and it it actually has high potency as you can see but it has a high recast 3.90 seconds so this is an incredibly long recast and it's gonna put our gcd rolling for quite some time it also has an additional effect of increased movement speed which is nice i guess basically what we do with this attack is we will only be using this if we're gonna get like a stunned in a mechanic and you know we're gonna be stunned for so long that it doesn't matter that we use this attack or we need to disengage for a long period of time then you can also use six-sided star in this scenario it isn't something huge to think about you probably wouldn't be losing too much dps by just forgetting that this ability exists but once you get a bit more advanced in monk and you start optimizing fights and speed kills and stuff like that then six-sided star will come in handy it is basically a min maxing tool it's going to increase your damage overall by a, you know a marginal amount not too big but again it is nice to min max with this and just practice with it again you don't have to use it you can ignore it i'm not telling you to ignore it but if you don't fully understand the usage of it it's not a huge loss by not using this again i'm not promoting you to not use your kit but i'm just telling you it's not massive and finally let's talk about perfect balance and the master's gauge 
First, let's talk about Perfect Balance real quick. Perfect Balance has a cooldown of 40 seconds and it is on two charges. Whenever we use this ability, it grants us three stacks of Perfect Balance, and this will allow us to execute any Opo Opo, Curl, or Raptor form attack and getting the full benefits from those attacks. That's what Perfect Balance does at a core level. Once we get to level 60 low, we get Enhanced Perfect Balance and we also get access to Masterful Blitz. This is where things get a little bit more complicated. But don't worry, I'm gonna make it simple. Basically, in the Master's Gauge, we're going to collect three stickers. Every time we use an Opo Opo attack, a Curl Form attack, or a Raptor Form attack, it's going to collect a sticker and add that to our Master's Gauge. Opo Opo attacks will share the same sticker, Coral form attacks again will share the same sticker, and Raptor form attacks again are going to share the same sticker. So you can mix the stickers up or you can have three of the same stickers and that is honestly the way to go. You always want three unique stickers or three of the same stickers. You never want two of the same stickers and then one unique one. Which leads me on to the actual point of why we're doing that in that particular way. That is because for every time we collect three stickers, Masterful Blitz will unlock and it's going to grant us access to Elixir Field, Flint Strike and Celestial Revolution. Now Flint Strike gets upgraded into Rising Phoenix once we hit 86, so I will be calling it that moving forward. So now that we've gone over all the Masterful Blitz attacks, let's break each one down. Elixir Field is an AoE around us and this requires three of the same sticker. This deals high potency, so we do want to be aiming to use this. Flint Strike slash Rising Phoenix is again an AoE around us and again this deals high damage. This Masterful Blitz attack requires three unique stickers to be able to use it. And again, we want to be also aiming for this one. There's a reason why we want to be aiming for two of these, by the way, and I'll go into that in just a moment. Finally, we have Celestial Revolution, and you'll see that this is actually a single target, but it's less potency than both Elixir Field, Flint Strike, Rising Phoenix. So that is exactly why we do not want to do Celestial Revolution. Celestial Revolution is our two stickers of the same and then one unique. This is more or less a consolation prize for messing up because at least it's going to execute our Masterful Blitz attack, which is highly important. I'll go into that in just a moment. But for the most part, we want to be aiming not to be using this. Now you'll notice when we go over Elixir Field, Flint Strike Rising Phoenix and Celestial Revolution, it's actually going to open a Naddy. Now a Naddy is another sticker next to our Master Gauge. And these again are stickers, but they need to be two different types of stickers. When we use Elixir Field, we will get the Lunar Naddy. And when we use Rising Phoenix, we will get the Solar Naddy. On top of that, Celestial Revolution is going to grant us either of the Naddies, depending on the one that we are missing. But if we're not missing any, it's going to grant us the Lunar one. Now, why are we collecting these Naddies? That is because once we have two different Naddies, then we will have access to Tornado Kick, which later turns into Phantom Rush. And this is what our third Masterful Blitz is going to turn into. Tornado Kick and Phantom Rush is an extremely high potency attack, as you can see. And this attack, instead of being an AoE around us, is an attack on a particular target and around that target. So we want to be targeting the most central mob when we use Phantom Rush or Tornado Kick. And that's exactly why we want to be collecting the stickers in this particular way, because our end goal is getting a Tornado Kick and Phantom Rush off at the end. And that's also why we ideally don't want to be going for Celestial Revolution, because it deals less potency and, you know, we want to get as much potency as we can throughout an encounter. So hopefully that's made sense. To put it into simple perspective, when you use Perfect Balance, you want to collect first three of the same or three unique. And then obviously, if you did three of the same, then do three unique stickers this time. And then once you've done both of those, you've done your Rising Phoenix, you've done your Elixir Field, your next Masterful Blitz is going to be a Tornado Kick or Phantom Rush. And that's exactly why we're collecting the stickers in this particular way, because that is the end goal to get the higher potency attack in the end. And then once we've done Tornado Kick or Phantom Rush, we'll then begin anew and we will then move towards getting that Phantom Rush again. You'll also notice that every time we use an attack under Masterful Blitz, these Masterful Blitz special attacks, they will grant us access to Formless Fist. So every time we finish using a Masterful Blitz attack, that means we can then execute any of our form attacks and get the full benefit of them, just like with form shift. So just be aware of this. It does come into play and it 
does prove very valuable in the core rotation and opener of a monk. It will make sense once we go into the opener rotation part of the video. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about when I'm using these abilities. Okay, let's finish off the ability section with our cross roll actions. First, we have Second Wind. This is on a 120 second cooldown, and it's going to simply heal us for 500k potency. This scales with our main stat, so it becomes stronger the stronger we get. This is good to be used on lethal damage, or it's good to be used if we're low and we need to top ourselves up, or damage is going to be really high and the healers need some help with healing, then use Second Wind. It's going to help your healers out. Then we have Leg Sweep, this is on a 40 second cooldown, it stuns the target and that stun is going to last 3 seconds. For the most part, rely on your tank to stun, but in a dungeon pool or something and a mob is doing an AoE around it, you can use Leg Sweep to stun that mob and keep up time. Then we have Blood Bath, this is on a 90 second cooldown, it lasts 20 seconds, and for every attack that we use under Blood Bath, it's going to convert that into HP which again, just like Second Wind, is a nice little bonus for healing ourselves and topping ourselves back up. This is nice sustain. So make sure we're using this when we need to heal ourselves back up or our healers want us to use our blood baths at particular moments throughout an encounter. Then we have Faint, our big raid utility. This is on a 90 second cooldown. It lasts 10 seconds and this is going to lower the target's physical damage dealt by 10% and their magic damage dealt by 5%. Ideally, use this on raid wides and raid busters because it now reduces magic damage dealt by 5%. This is more or less a lot more helpful for your healers when it comes to raid wides rather than having this for your tank on tank busters like we used to do back in the day because honestly tanks have the tools to cover themselves for tank busters nowadays and they really do not need the help of faint so don't worry about that pretty much use faint exclusively raid wides and raid busters and don't worry too much about your tanks as they'll be absolutely fine then we have arms length this is on a 120 second cooldown and it's going to last six seconds this is going to give us an anti knockback so if an enemy is going to do a knockback attack and we don't want to get knocked back and we want to keep uptime then use arms length and nullify that knockback completely we then have true north this is on a 45 second cooldown it has two charges and it lasts 10 seconds this is going to nullify all action direction requirements so what this means is when we for some reason cannot get our snap punch or demolish positional then use true north and this is going to nullify the damage loss that we would have got if we didn't hit that positional so use this when the boss is spinning or whatever the boss is going to spin just make sure that we know when to use this so we are not missing out on any damage from positionals all right that should just about cover every single ability that monk has at its disposal and a nice little breakdown of how to be using those abilities and how to understand the kit. Now let's move on to the opener and rotation and reopener part of the video. Okay, let's go over the opener, rotation and reopener. So the opener that we're going to be using here is the Solar and Lunar Nadi opener. This is the easiest opener to pull off, the easiest rotation to pull off, and it's a very good baseline to start as a monk player. It's going to get you through any high-end content, and you're also going to be playing optimally with this opener rotation. That said, when you're a bit more comfortable playing monk and you want to up your game and take it to the next level, there are resources, and I will provide those resources for different openers and rotations. I'm not going to cover them all because this video would stretch out way too long if I did. So I'm going to show you a really good baseline, and if you would like those resources, they will be in the description below. With that said, let's just begin. So first off, we're going to obviously use our Meditate and we're going to get our 5 Chakra. Then we're also going to use a Form Shift, so we're ready to use Dragon Kick straight off the bat. Now I don't use Potion here, and there are decisions you can make here. You can either use the Potion in the Opener, which is easy, simple stuff, or you can use it in the Reopener. I don't use Potion in either point, but I'll try and point out where you would use your Potion in the Opener and Reopener. So in this instance, I'm going to let the footage play. You'll notice that we do not use Brotherhood, Riddle Fire, and our Chakra straight away because we want to line these up. And this is only in the case of the opener. So we use Dragon Kick here. And as soon as we've done that, we're going to then Potion if we wanted to Potion. The reason for this is because as soon as we use Twin Snakes, we then use Riddle of Fire. So we couldn't have used our Potion there. So that's why we would want to use that as our first GCD. We would do our first GCD and then use Potion. Anyway, I'm going to let the footage play out and you can pay attention to how this is going. Then I'm going to break down a few things afterwards. Okay, that is pretty much the opener. Now let me break down a few things here, just to make it make sense. 
So something highly important here is as soon as we hit Demolish, you'll see, we are then going to go into a boot shine because we have a lead and fist up. And then we're going to use Perfect Balance and Brotherhood. The reason for this is, of course, so we can get our lead and fist back up from Dragon Kick and then boot shine, lead and fist, boot shine. You'll see it just now. And in between all that, we use our Riddle of Wind as well. And just like that, we alternated our boot shine dragon kick. And that's because the raw damage output of dragon kick and boot shine combined is just incredible. And it's the best way to get your free natty stacks for your elixir field. In an ideal scenario, you will be aiming for this to get your elixir fields off. We'll then use another boot shine just before going into perfect balance. And then we're going to refresh our disciplined fist because that's about to run out. After that, we'll use a dragon kick to give us a leaden fist buff. And then we're going to reapply that Demolish because it's about to fall off. And then of course we have our Rising Phoenix, so we're going to use that. And then we're going to use Twin Snakes here to get our Disciplined Fist back up to 15 seconds. The reason for this is line up, and it's just going to make the opener and rotation throughout the entire fight a lot easier to pull off. Now I'm just going to let the rest play out until we get to the odd Riddle of Fire. Now you notice that it's six seconds off. We're just going to do one more rotation here. And then we're going to pop Riddle of Fire. And then we're going to go into Boot Shine. And then we're going to go into Perfect Balance. And we're going to go Dragon Kick, Boot Shine, Dragon Kick. And you'll, you'll see what I mean. And then we have our Phantom Rush, you'll see, under Riddle of Fire. So that is pretty nice. After that, it's very important that we get our Disciplined Fist back and our Demolish as they're about to run out. And that's the second reopener. Pretty easy, that one, to pull off. So I'll just let the footage play out again and I'll just talk to you when it comes to the reopener, which is probably the hardest part to pull off. You'll notice that our Riddle of Wind is about to come back up and, you know, we're just going to use that off cooldown. Okay, you'll notice that our Riddle of Fire is very close to being off cooldown. You'll see that we used a Dragon Kick and then we moved on to Lead and Fist here. Then we're going to use our Twin Snake to get our Disciplined Fist up. And just before we use Demolish, we're going to use our Riddle of Fire. And then I'm just going to let the rest play out because it's going to make sense. Although, to mention, you'll notice that I did slightly clip the GCD here. I am getting slight lag and my GCD is not really in the right place. So that's why it is the way it is. But for the most part, you won't be suffering this. And if you need to know the GCD, then it will be coming up in the stat and gearing part of the video. Now you notice that our Discipled Fist just fell off again. I've already given my reason to why this is happening, so don't worry too much about it. It shouldn't happen. And then, of course, I'm going to get this last Demolish off with my Raid Buffs and my Riddle of Fire. And this will also be under Potion if we do decide to use Potion in the Reopener rather than the Opener. And then that's it. That's pretty much the whole thing. After that, it's just played off like you've been doing the rotation so far. So you're just going to go about your day, keeping your Demolish up, keeping your Twin Snakes up, your Discipled Fist even, and it's going to be fine. You're going to be absolutely fine. Now let's talk about the stats and the gearing of Monk. So as Monk, we want to be aiming for a GCD of either 1.94 or 1.93. If you're like me, you have bad connection or maybe you stream, then 1.93 is probably the way to go because it's going to alleviate a lot of the pain from clipping into your GCD and just missing your cooldowns and not getting your Discipled Fist up and your Demolish and all that 
bad stuff. You want to generally avoid that kind of stuff. So personally, I'm going for that GCD, the 1.93. Although in most of my footage, I went 1.94 to try it out, but it honestly doesn't work for me. So yeah, if you have bad ping like me, go for 1.93. If you live next to the servers, go for 1.94. After we have met that skill speed threshold, we will then be prioritizing critical hit because critical hit is king and it will be king for probably the foreseeable future. So you can't go wrong with putting in crit. Once you've met that threshold of skill speed, put in as much crit as you possibly can. Once you've gotten as much crit as you can and maybe your piece doesn't want to accept any more crit, then put determination in. If you can't put any more crit, any more determination, then put in direct hit. And that is how your stats should look. So you want to prioritize skill speed to your certain threshold, then get as much crit as possible. If you can't get any more crit in, go determination. And then if you can't get any more determination in, then go for direct hit. And that, my friends, is how to monk at a baseline level. And when I say baseline, don't think I mean bad level or anything. Baseline is very good and you will be playing the job at an optimal level as well. That said, when you've learned monk a bit more and you're more comfortable with fights, you will learn to optimize specific fights at a higher level. And that will be down to you as a player on a fight per fight basis. So don't worry about that too much. Once you get better at the job and more comfortable with its kit, you will learn to do this stuff by yourself. So do not worry about that. Also, how do I feel about Monk? I really, really do like the job. I'll be honest. It's it's a fun job. It's busy and it's frustrating and stressful, but it's fun. I really do enjoy it. And if you want the kind of challenge and the minimaxing potential that Monk has, then play Monk. It's a really good job. It brings a lot to the table, has a lot of utility, does a lot of good personal damage. You can't go wrong by playing a Monk. So if you want to play a Monk, play a Monk. Absolutely no problem. And I've had a blast with it. If you've made it all the way to the end, then I really do appreciate your time. And if you did enjoy the video, then please do hit that thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed yet, then I really would love you hitting that subscribe button as well, as that would mean a lot to myself and the channel. If you think I've missed anything or you can provide any feedback or just let me know genuinely how you feel about Monk, then do leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you would like to go above and beyond for my channel, then you can check out the social links in the description below. There is a Discord, a Twitter and a Twitch, and I'm going to leave it at that. So if if you are interested in checking me out further, go to the links provided and have a look for yourself. And with all that said and done, I will end it here. Again, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Stay safe. We out. Goodbye.